We don't often get to hear these words of the law. And so in this time of stewardship, so much of the law is built around what we have and what we do with it and how we treat each other and the words of how the community gathers that it made sense to look at what some of that brings to us. And so this short passage from Deuteronomy is in the midst of a much longer passage of laws and all of the ways that we are to, to gather, to treat one another and so forth. But then this passage talks to us about the resources that come our way throughout the year. And so this simple word that we are to bring a tithe, and some translations will give that and actually spell it out. The word tithe is a really good church word, but it doesn't really carry into culture very often. But what the people were asked to do was to bring a tenth of their income for the year or their resources and bring it to what we would presume would be the temple, although a temple really wasn't built at this point. So I like the way that we read this here. It says that we are to bring it to the place that God has chosen as a dwelling for God's name. I kind of like that, that we are to bring our offerings to the very place that God chooses to dwell and where the name of God is made known. And so that becomes a part of what the people knew they were going to do. It's, it actually sounds different than if you say, oh, I brought my offering to church. But if you say, I'm bringing my offering to the place where we know that God chooses to dwell. Now, of course, when we say that, we go, isn't God everywhere? Well, yes, but we also do know there's something about the community specifically gathered in God's name that just has a, a different nuance to us. It brings a, a, a new meaning into our life to be in the place that has been constructed specifically so that God's name can be praised. And it was there that the people brought a tenth of their, of their resources, a tenth of their income, a, a tenth of what they had. Now, we know that in today's world, it feels like we just bring our offerings or we put them in the plate or we do it digitally or you've already done it for the whole year and you know that every week or every month it's just coming out of your bank account and all of that works. But what we don't want to miss sight of is the way that is supposed to have some kind of effect on us. I mean, what that actually does for us in our spirit is really what the law was all about. We know that through this, that the, the Levites, the priests, that they were taken care of through the offerings that were brought to the temple or the place where God dwells. We know that they were able to go out and help the, the poor and the needy with those resources. But more importantly, it was what happens to the person individually and what gets extended to the community. And this is what I really like about this passage from Deuteronomy. So after you bring forth a tenth of your yield, the seed or anything that you have, you put that in the presence of God in the place where God dwells, and then you eat that tithe of you've got grain, wine, oil, and the firstlings of your flock. That sounds like a party to me. This is what was intended to happen. Our offerings were not so intended to be something that we bring and we leave and we walk away. Our offerings were meant to be that very uh, gift that turns into a celebration. So as the people brought those offerings, now they were realizing they were going to sit down in the community. So these these gifts weren't simply given to the church. These gifts were given so that the community could be strengthened. That the community would have a reason to celebrate together. And in that community, you realize that not everybody had the same. Some people brought a tenth of their resources and they had a lot more, but it all got contributed to the party. Some people's resources were a lot less, but what they contributed all was a part of the community and that was the beauty of what was happening in this place that as the community gathered everybody realized that they were there together and the celebration that was going to take place was for 
everyone. And then we might look at what happens years later as Jesus is sitting opposite the treasury. And so Jesus sees people come and putting in their gifts. Now it doesn't tell us that people were bringing their tithe at that point. It just said that people were bringing gifts to the treasury. Some people were putting in large sums because they obviously had large resources. And then we get the story of the poor widow who comes in and puts in two little copper coins worth a penny. Now I want to I want to find out if the story or the movie that you kind of play in your head looks a little bit like the movie that I've played in my head many, many years when I hear this story. Does anybody have the image, like if there's the offering plate here, that this poor widow kind of walks up with her head down and won't look at anybody and just drops her coins in and kind of shrinks away? Anybody had that image run in your head over time? Mine too. I have to admit, that's usually how I look at that passage. But when I consider that passage in lieu of the Deuteronomy passage, it really changes my idea of what this is. And I'm thinking this poor widow was not somebody who was to be looked down upon but somebody who was invited to the same party as everybody else this poor widow was being brought into the community and part of the gifts of the offering to the treasury were to support everyone in the community so what if the movie that we have playing in our head is this poor widow walking up to the treasury with her head held high and a smile on her face and she puts in her offering because she knows she's a part of the community. And she knows in the midst of that that the community is going to celebrate and she's invited in the same way that everybody else is invited. And then... Jesus even turns the tables on that a little bit and certainly says, of course she's invited the same way everybody is, but maybe even more so because she put into that, that, that offering, she put into that treasury everything she had. Other people had plenty to put in and maybe they did, but they gave out of their abundance, but she gave everything she had. And then... We get that last phrase of what Sylvia read for us. The reason that we were asked to bring a tithe in the, in the first place. The reason that the people were compelled to bring 10% of what they had to the church was for this very reason. So that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. Now, as, as we hear that in the Old Testament, it did not mean that God was looking out and going... Only 7%. Man, God's ready for a smackdown because we are to fear the Lord if we don't bring a full tenth. That's not at all the connotation that comes to us as we hear this Old Testament phrase, fear the Lord. I think it's much more appropriate to say that we bring a tenth of our income so that we can stand in awe of the Lord. Because we realize that no matter what we give, God is ready to replenish. No matter what it is that we bring, God is ready to have those blessings extend beyond that to us. And so we stand in awe of the Lord, that God will continue to supply us. We stand in awe of the Lord, because it's only when I get to, to the place of generosity that it actually makes a difference in my spirit that that this generosity I actually feel within my own being then I realize that I have put myself completely in the trust of God I've put myself completely in understanding the awe uh, the awesomeness that God has brought into my life and when that happens, I also realize that I'm in awe that the community gathers to celebrate. That the community gathers and everybody gets to participate. And so I get this image that this, this poor widow was a person who understood what it meant, meant to stand in the awe of the Lord. To realize that she could give over everything she had because she was a part of a community that was ready to care for her 
that was ready to welcome her in, that was ready to be a support for her, and that when she did that in complete trust, she had no concerns, no worries whatsoever. This is what the law actually can do for us. Because sometimes we feel like the law is something that's going to lord over us and make us fear that we're not living up to God's expectations. But I think the law opens us up to feel God's generosity in our life. To let us know how deeply we can trust in God. To let us know how deeply we can trust in the community around us. And when we when we consider that we give, we give enough that we actually feel it in our spirit. When that happens, there's really almost nothing else you could do. When you know that your offerings are being celebrated in the midst of community, there's almost nothing else that you could do except this. Decide to have a party. If you were going to commit enough that you feel it in your spirit in the midst of community, we should have a party. Amen.